Topic 1.7, uh, some more problem solving. The whole concept of reasonableness. All right, so we've solved division problems, and we've also had division problems that had remainders. What we're going to do today is checking the reasonableness um, of an answer to a division problem that has a remainder. You'll see what I'm talking about in a moment. I'm going to give you a couple of scenarios using the same numbers, but um, you'll see at the end um, how you deal with the remainder, whether you report that in your answer or not, um, is what you have to decide. Let's say that we have uh, 32 ounces of orange juice, okay? and we have um, a bunch of 6-ounce glasses here. Uh, the question I want the, for, for the first problem is how many six ounce glasses can we fill with this orange juice that we have? So let's see, we'll fill up one. There's six there. Another six ounces there. That gives us 12, right? And another six ounces here. That's 18. Another six, and we have six ounces more that we can put there to get us 24. Some more six ounces here. That's going to get us 30. Oh. We only have two ounces left. So in this answer right here, if the question were how many six ounce glasses could you fill with 32 ounces of orange juice, your answer would be five glasses. In this scenario, or this situation, we're going to use the same numbers, but look how your answer changes at the end to be reasonable. This one right here we have, um, we need to know how many bags are needed for 32 apples. If each bag holds six apples. So let's go ahead and place those apples in there. Make sure I don't make a mistake. Six in each bag. What's that? 18? 24? 30? 32 apples total, so we have two more going over here. So, 32 apples, and we need to know how many bags are needed to hold 32 apples. In this case, two, three, four, five, six bags are needed. So your answer on this one was six, whereas in the juice, it was five. You have to go back when you get the answer to with a remainder, you have to go back and check the question to see which answer is the most reasonable. We're going to use this table here to answer a couple of questions. Okay, you see um, some basic uh, science lab supplies, and let's say that there are 72 total students in the fifth grade. Okay, so if there's 72 students. How many packets of pH paper, you know, for acids and bases, how many packets of pH paper uh, do we need to order for everybody to have some? Well, there's 10 in a pack, and we have 72 students. That gets seven packs with two remainder. We can't forget about those two students. So how many packs do we need? We'll need eight packs of pH paper. Okay, now let's look at the case of test tubes. Five students can use a case of test tubes. We have 72 students. So not to leave anybody out, let's think. Uh, how close can we come to 72? Well, I know that, what, 5 times 14 is 70. But we need to take care of that remainder. So we're going to bump it up, have to order some extra. Uh, we'll have a little extra left over, but for the case of test tubes, that would be 15 cases. I want you to go ahead and see how many uh, cases of Petri dishes we need if four students can use a case with 72 students. Pause the recording and see if you can calculate that out. And also let me know if there, um, how much is extra left over. Did you come up with 18 cases needed? And how many left over? None. They're going to use them all. I hope they don't break them. All right, 
Here's a table for your work, for your questions. Uh, you may want to go ahead and pause the movie at the end of my rambling and uh, answer your questions. And I'll see you in the morning.